hello guys welcome to our channel once again today we are going to talk about configuring azure data factory logs to send it to azure log analytics as you are aware that auditing and logging is very important phenomena in your etl journey though azure provides a lot of mechanism of monitoring azure data factory but those are all manual. You can go to your data factory monitor and you can see all your pipeline runs and you can go to each and every activity and see it. However, there will be the cases where you would like all these things to be sent to log analytics so that it can be later on analyzed and audited through programs, right? So programmatically, you can retrieve those things. So how you can achieve that? For that, you would need Azure Log Analytics which is also called Azure Monitor now, which has been renamed. So Azure Monitor is a central system or service which Azure provides where you can send all your Azure services log to. And at the same time, Azure Data Factory can also send the log. So how you can send your logs to Azure Log Analytics? How Log Analytics works? We'll, we'll quickly go through the Azure Log Analytics basic services and what are the features it provides? How you can query your Log Analytics tables? how you can save those queries and how you can utilize these queries to configure alerts. Now those alerts can run your queries and based on your query results, it can send alerts to various different groups. So we'll also talk about those things and how you can integrate other services. So this is going to be the agenda for today's video. So let's jump into our demo. now i am in my azure data factory okay as you can see this is my azure data factory and in the left pan you can see all these plates which are available features now what you need to go do is you need to reach to your diagnostic settings in this diagnostic settings you'll say add diagnostic settings okay and now here you have an option to choose what are logs you want to send azure to your azure monitor or log analytics Okay, either you can choose to send all the logs or if you don't want all the logs, you can actually select what all things you want and what you don't want, right? Now, once you have selected your logs, you have an option to send it either to log analytics workspace or you can archive it to storage account for your future usage. You can stream it to your event hub or you can send it to other partner solutions. So right now we are going to focus on Azure log analytics. So you will just select this and if you have a log analytics in your subscription you can choose it from here okay so that that's the all what you need to do now here you have an option whether to send it to azure diagnostic table or to resource specific table i'll just give you a brief about it once we go to log analytics but my recommendation would always be to choose resource specific so that you know that which all tables are going to have or host your logs so choose resource specific here because i already have a configuration i am not configuring it i'll just show you what i have done now you can see there's one entry here i'll say edit settings now i have chosen to send logs for pipeline activity runs pipeline run logs trigger run logs sandbox pipeline run logs sandbox activity run logs now you must be thinking what is the difference between pipeline activity pipeline run and sandbox pipeline run and sandbox activity run. So if you do not choose these two, what will happen is if you do debug runs in your Azure Data Factory, those logs will not be sent to log analytics. So it is up to your choice whether you want those logs or not. So if you want to make it production ready and you are configuring for a data factory which where you are not going to debug it or you don't want it you can uncheck this but because i have been doing it for training and learning purposes i have chosen this also so this all check boxes are checked so all these logs will be sent to log analytics and i have chosen resources specific okay that's all you need to do here okay? now i'll go back to my log analytics workspace if i go to my log analytics workspace one thing you will see is tables now if you click on the tables it will list down all the tables which are part of this log analytics 
so based on which all services you have enabled it will show you the tables right now i have enabled azure data factory so you can see the tables which are relevant to adf it says adf activity run adf pipeline run adf sandbox activity run adf sandbox pipeline run so these are all the things which are relevant to our adf now if you have configured some other services those service specific tables will also feature in here but right now let's focus here okay now how do you actually see the logs which are there okay now you go to logs let me run it or because we know that we are focusing on adf i'll just start to start typing adf it will show you all the tables which are there for adf right now adf activity run okay and this language in which it is queried this is called custo query language and this is a specific to log analytics it is similar to sql but not exactly same so you need to know the basics of those to query it but let's just see what all things are there in this table currently okay now if i run it yeah you can see all these activity logs are here which are there from even before i run my adf pipeline because i had this from my previous runs now i want to filter all the logs which has happened from a particular time range what i'll do is where time generated i'll say ago one hour so what it is going to tell me or show me is anything any log which has been generated uh, within last one hour okay so let's see if we have any logs here no log actually i have not run anything in last one hour now i'll do similar thing for adf pipeline run so i'll say adf pipeline run i'll say time generated okay see there is nothing here okay now let's go to data factory and try out a few things I am going to my data factory, edit mode. I have this pipeline. So what I'll do first thing is I'm running it in a debug mode. Okay. Just to see that whether these debug logs are going to the table or not. So I purposefully made some kind of configuration so that it fails because we'll be able to see how the failure shows, uh, how the error messages shows here. It is in queue, we'll wait for some time. And you also need to remember that there is small lag. So as soon as you run here, it may not appear in your log analytics. So give it some time, maybe 30 seconds to one minute or max two minutes. Okay. Now it has failed. Now this pipeline is completed. Now I'm going back to my log analytics and, and try to run. Okay, nothing. Okay, anyways. Uh, one more thing is that as we said that the debug logs do not come here on the same table if you are doing a debug activity you need to query your sandbox table let's say adf sandbox activity run where time generated Now you can see even in this table it is not showing up but we'll have to wait for probably a minute i just want to ensure and show you that how our debug logs are different from your trigger runs so that you are absolutely clear what to expect in which table okay see now you can see it took a minute of time and now you can see there are two entries why you have two entries because there are two different set of operations so once it was queued and then it went to in progress i believe there should be one more entry for failure yeah now you can see you can see this failed now if you want to know what are why it has failed where is the error message right so let's find out failure type is user error failure pipeline run i still don't see error message so here uh, you can also choose what all columns you want to see right 
um, let us see yeah you can see here error code error message by default it is not selected i'll go ahead and i'll select both of them i'll select error also now let's see if you can see something i'll see error message okay or we can also go back to our adf and see what is the error message there and then we'll try to tally it here let's do that now we are in our adf now you see this error message shows fail to execute a script accepts and cannot connect to sql database however when i go to our log analytics it doesn't show anything it is a little strange but could be because it's in a debug run so what we'll try to do is we'll replicate exactly same thing in the trigger run and then we'll see how the logs are generated let me go back to okay before i go there i'll also uh, do one more search on this table to be sure that the log the debug run has not come here right so you can see in both the tables still there are no record now what we'll do is in adf we'll just trigger it i'll set trigger now this is a difference you can see that Previously, we had done a debug run. Now we are doing a trigger run. So let it complete or let it fail, and then we'll go back and we'll query our tables. Now I'm coming back here, and we'll have to wait for about a minute here. It has not come yet so I will wait for another half a minute yeah, now I can see two rows one is for Q and one is for in progress yeah now you can see the field as well now I'll again do one more thing is to select my error messages here okay it is already selected so we'll go back and we'll see the error message Yeah, you can see the error message here, which is exactly matching. Cannot connect to SQL database. Please contact SQL Server team. So whatever message we have seen in the Azure Data Factory, you can see it here as well. Now, uh, there are two main tables which it creates. Uh, you might have guessed it by now. One is ADF pipeline runs and the other one is Azure ADF activity run. So pipeline run table is going to capture the attributes at a pipeline level and activity runs is going to capture all the activities are within the pipeline it means your one pipeline has 10 activities all 10 activities and their progress queues and failure success everything will get logged in activity table it means if you want to know for each and every activity you will query activity table or if you want to know about the pipeline status then you can query pipeline table now what if you want to capture data from both of them can we make a join yes we can make a join right the way you do it in sql table something similar you can do here as well so i'll show you a uh, basic of that i'll just select adf pipeline run table as my left table and i'll say make a join i'll have to tell a kind what kind of join it is i'll say inner then i'll give my other table activity run on left dot now my left table is adf pipeline run there my column name is run id which i want to match with my right table and here the column name is okay there is something wrong it should not be equal operator it should be double equal because we are going to compare right dot pipeline run id now it will make a join between these two tables Now you'll notice that now you have nine rows three from activity table and three from pipeline table now i want to just select those rows where i have a failure so i'll say status now you'll notice there are two columns called status and status one because status is a column which is available in both the table 
for this distinction, uh, log analytics automatically renames one of them as status one. So when I say status is equal to failed, and you will also notice that this is case sensitive. Okay. Now you can see there are three records still because for one pipeline there are three activities. Sorry, uh, for one pipeline run you have three different status of the activity even though all of three all three are different statuses because we have not filtered on activity status we have filtered on a pipeline status but this is how you can make a join okay now what if i want to just select few column i am not interested in so many things which are not relevant to me i'll say pipeline name activity name and then time generated if I run this, you will see only three columns here. What if I want to short it? I'll say short by time generated. I can say descending. Okay. So this way you can actually make a complicated queries also, which suits your purpose or your requirement. Okay. Now, what if I want to save it, right? Can I save this? Yes, you can save your query. I'll give a name ADF joins and I'll say legacy then I'll have to select a category I've saved it now how do I retrieve it you can see the queries window here you say group by legacy category ADF and now I have set three different queries saved here so you can actually retrieve your queries you say click here and then you can run it or you can load it in the you can load it in the editor. Okay. Yeah. You see load to editor or run. So this way you have saved your queries. So why why we are doing all this exercise, right? Why why we have captured all the logs here? It means or you, you may uh, think of a scenario where you want to configure some kind of alert mechanism. In case some critical pipeline fails, this gets notified to a concerned people or to the support team, right? Or you may need to create a service not ticket for this. So that is where it will be helpful. So let's take this query. Now go to our alerts. Let's see how you can use use alert. Now when you come here, you'll see alert rules. Okay. And I'll say create alert. Now you can choose either one of the things which is already available or you can say custom log. When you say custom log, you can write your own query. So you have you have written your query and let us test it here. See, you, it is going to return me three rows here, right? Now one more thing you need to do is you also should add some time criteria. I'll say time where time generated I go one hour why I'm doing is because I found to schedule this alert for every one hour it should check only last one hour data not prior to that okay it is ready now I'll say continue editing now you can see this query has come here now I'll say run it every one hour then say greater than zero it means if that query returns even a single row, it means this criteria fulfills, right? Now the important thing is a action group. Now what this action group, what you can define is that what action should be taken if this succeeds. So either you create an action group if you do not have already, or you can select action group if you have already created. So let's go here and see what all thing you need to give. So we'll just give a name. and then go to actions and now you'll see all these options here so based on this alert trigger you can either send a message to your azure function event hub itsm this is for your one of the connector for your service now you can send message to your logic app so let's choose one of this logic app and this logic app has to be an http trigger so if you have already created an http trigger you can see it showing in your drop down okay what will happen is whenever this rule succeeds it will send or it will trigger your logic app now in turn 
logic app can actually notify your action group or the support team it can send email or it can do whatever you want to do in your logic app so with this what we have done is we have actually configured our adf to send all the logs monitoring logs to your log analytics within log analytics now you know how you can actually query your logs and how you can take action so this is a complete suit you would need to monitor and audit your data engineering pipeline further to that you can also actually create service now tickets or you can actually send message to other partner solution which we can talk about in our next videos but till now thanks for watching and please subscribe our channel